Hey everyone, how are we doing? My name is Tim Pongraz and this is Focus on Detailing. What happens when you try to review over 10 products within the one video with someone that likes to keep their uploads nice and short and to the point? Well, you get something like this. So today's video is dedicated to reviewing the majority of Jay Leno's Garage exterior detailing product line. That includes their all-purpose cleaner, wheel cleaner, strip wash, clay mitt, bug and tile remover, metal polish, buffing compound, polish, finishing polish, radiant which is a spray sealant, hand wax, tire and trim care, tire shine and glass cleaner, as well as a few of their accessories. I'll do my very best to keep this video informative, but to the point, as I don't really like those long drawn out videos as most of my viewers probably already know, so I may as well get straight into it. To test all these products, I thought the perfect car would be my girlfriend's Toyota Hilux. It has a few different surfaces in need of attention that I can give Jay Leno's products a real run to see how well they go up against a real workhorse. This isn't no garage queen, so hopefully there will be a nice, noticeable difference before and after. Now the way this is going to work is I'm going to run through each and every product and then leave my thoughts to the very end, so that way we don't get bombarded with information. As usual, I start with those wheels, using both the wheel cleaner, all purpose cleaner and their large wheel brush. I started by spraying a generous amount of the wheel cleaner over the face and up and around the wheel. Once that was applied, I let it work its magic, reacting with the iron particles and other contaminants over the surface. I then spray the APC over the tyre and around the wheel well. Immediately after I began scrubbing using both the brush from Jay Leno and my own. If your tyre or wheel well was overly dirty, it's a good idea to rinse it down first to knock off a lot of that mud, so the cleaners can obviously do their job a little better. Once all of that was well cleaned and agitated, I used my other brushes and wheel woolies to clean the wheel now that it had already been going through the process of being cleaned with the wheel cleaner. Starting from the top and working my way to the bottom. Finally, once I was content that everything was tidied up, I used my pressure washer to rinse from top to bottom, removing all remnants of the chemicals and other mess along with it. This was to be done to all of the wheels as well as using the APC beneath the car too. Second cleaning stage was the first part of the stripping process. We don't want any previous protective layers over the car for what we'll be doing. So bring on the clean strip. I started with the most gentle method and that was through the foam cannon. This will help to remove the loose mess and break down more stuck on grime without having to lay a hand on the paintwork. I made sure to spray from the bottom to the top, working quickly around the car as it was a warmer day. And although undercover, like most chemicals, we want to avoid letting it dry on the paint and other surfaces. It's a pH balanced biodegradable detergent that'll be prepping the surface for the next cleaning steps. And if it does what it's telling us it'll do, help to remove any protective layers. Once the car was completely covered, I went around with a brush and the APC focusing on the badges and tighter hard to read spots. Agitating the surface using the soap as a lubricant and the APC as a heavier cleaner. A commonly overlooked practice, but a good one to keep in mind for those more thorough cleans. Again, once content, I rinsed down the entire car from top to bottom, bringing with it any loosened mess. Clean strip wasn't getting a break as I'd be using it again with Jay Leno's plush wash mitt. This now allowed for a more thorough clean while still being safe using the two bucket method. Those two buckets also supplied by Jay Leno's garage. They come with wheels, grid guards and lids. Once I filled the two buckets and foamed up the wash one, I worked in straight motion starting with the top of the car and working my way down, rinsing off once I had done each section. If the wash mitt got too soiled or simply I thought it needed to be done, I dunked it in the dedicated rinse bucket to remove any mess lifted from the surface to avoid rubbing it back in. Now. 
Next on the list to help with the stripping stage was the clay mitt. No real need to prep the mitt like you would with a clay bar when you would mould it. Just whip it out and make sure the surface you're about to work on is clean and well lubricated. I continued with soaping the surface, but this time to help lubricate the given area so the clay mitt could slide across and with it lifting the more embedded contaminants. I worked in straight motions again over every surface, giving more attention to areas that are more prone to getting dirtier or feel grippy or rough. Same as before, once I had finished a section, it was thoroughly rinsed down. You don't necessarily have to use a soap with a clay mitt, it's been outlined that you can also use their quick detailer. The goal here was to get a surface feeling slick, looking clean and again free of any protective layers. All these prep stages lead up into the next one and taking your time with each one will help improve and in the end give you the best results. There is no real cheating in detailing, easier and faster steps but in the end the goal is still the same. I dried the entire car down using the large drying towel. Pretty straightforward job really, just placed it over each area and gently pulled it across with little to no pressure to help remove the excess water. The final cleaning stage before moving into the paint correction was using the bug and tar remover. I wanted the car to be dry so it had the best chance of cleaning off the bugs of the bonnet, bull bar and windscreen. Having it dry would avoid dilution and have the product stick for longer. I sprayed then left it to dwell for a minute or so so it could really penetrate the built up mess. I ran over the sprayed surfaces again with my wash mitt, then thoroughly rinsed it all down to make sure no product was left to stain. Once again, I dried the car. It was then pulled in under the carport. Now I could get a better idea having it clean or cleanse just what I had to deal with. From a distance the paintwork didn't actually look all that bad but when you put a light on top of it that's when things really do show. You can see that the paintwork is really faded and you can't even really see how badly it swelled due to that fading. Some spots unfortunately are too far gone such as the large gouges but for its age it's doing pretty well. The next stages should get it looking a whole lot better though. First up was the compound. I'll be using my brand new Shymate Dual Action Polisher and I decided to go with a yellow cutting pad. One off being the heaviest cut from Shinemate. I placed several pea sized blobs of the cutting compound over my pad. Then once I had gently pressed the pad over the paint, kept the polisher on a light speed to spread the product before turning it up to a higher speed with very slow motions and moderate pressure. As you can tell, I've already taped up areas around the car where I don't want the compound hitting or the dust from the compounding to fall into. If you want more detail about cutting and polishing specifically, then I have a separate video for that, but for now, we'll stick with what's going on with Jay Leno's correcting products. I used a plush towel to remove the compound residue after each section, buffing to begin with, then flipping over to wipe to a clean finish. Once I had finished a testing spot, I checked my work. Just from a few passes, I like to see how well it's working before really getting into it. Consider it a safety precaution slash finding out how much work I've got ahead of me. This work can be slow, but always rewarding if done right. White paint probably isn't the best for this test showing more noticeable results, but you'll be surprised when the paint is faded and damaged like this example. It's sometimes not as simple as going to the heaviest cutting product with the heaviest cutting pad. Preferably, you like to remove as little clear as possible to remove the defects to get great results. It was a fine line with some areas of the Hilux. It clearly had some resprayed areas, but also some areas that were very thin. This process was followed in the exact same manner the next day. The polish was used in conjunction with a blue ShineMate pad with similar speed and moderate pressure again. The aim here was to help remove the marks that can be left behind from the more aggressive cut, leaving a more refined finish. It has the ability to remove moderate to light paint defects if you were wanting to use it on its own with the appropriate pad. A polish like this is perfect for cars that are in need of that added glow and to help remove light damage to paintwork. It's safe for all paint types and has no fillers so you know that you're not just covering up the issues. I used a new plush towel to remove the residue same as before. Yeah. 
Lastly for the paint correction was the finishing polish. This was used with an orange intermediate shine mate pad with a lower speed and less pressure. It has the ability to remove minor hazing, swirls and holograms, but allows for the most pure finish. Products like these aren't used as much as many people can achieve crystal results from polishing alone. So a finishing polish with little cutting ability is to finish the paint down to an even higher gloss and shine level. All of these correcting creams worked perfectly with my larger 21mm polisher and mini rotary everywhere across the car. Next up was to fix that tarnished metal with Jay Leno's Garage Metal Polish. I decided to do it by hand simply to show that it can be done this way too if you don't have a machine polisher. It's a good idea to use a towel that you use specifically for metal as it's dirty work. It will likely turn black from the oxidation it's helping to remove. I worked in small circular motions avoiding plastics and rubber then buffing with a separate microfiber towel. I soon realised that this work isn't exactly easy by hand but although painful, metal polishing is also pretty rewarding when done right. Are you filming now? No. Yeah. Entering into the final stages, I washed the car again to help remove any hidden dust from the correcting stages, then applied the first layer of protection, which was Jay Leno's Radiance. I simply sprayed on the given surface, wiped with one towel to spread the liquid, then finished by buffing with a separate microfiber towel. It's a silica spray sealant that's safe for all surfaces and helps to protect your car, leaving a nice shine and a hydrophobic surface. This was done to every spot of the car and was then left to cure for half an hour before adding the next layer of protection which was the hand wax. All I needed for this was another towel and an applicator pad. I started by adding a small amount to the pad then butterflying to help prep it. Now I simply and gently wiped it across adding a thin layer to the paintwork, working in straight motions, up down side to side so it was completely covered. Once it went to a haze I buffed it off with Jay Leno's plush microfiber towel. One side to remove the majority then flipped over to buff to a super slick finish. This will help lock in the shine created from Radiant and also add its own high gloss wet look. It was now time to work on those finer details and that involved using the tyre and trim care. This was applied to all the seals and plastics across the car. This surprisingly is an overlooked step but so important especially for cars like this that live out in the sun. This not only helps to prevent fading but gives that back to black look on parts that may already be faded. Easy enough to apply, just have to avoid wiping it on areas where it's not supposed to be. Now we can't forget about the glass cleaning stage. I've already been over this with my Jay Leno's Garage interior detailing video. Simple as spray then wipe using their dedicated diamond pattern towel and flip to the other side to buff to a clean finish or use another separate glass tower depending on how much you're doing. The very last step for this now extremely tidy Hilux was to make those tyres black again using their dedicated tyre shine. I sprayed a generous amount all around, then using their foam block spread it and massaged it into the rubber. This is a tough durable product and works well for this tough durable ute. We want these tyres staying black and not obviously brown. If the look was too wet for you, I do believe you can come back with another microfiber towel that you don't care much for and wipe off the excess product. This will help to create a more matte like finish. Now that is it for the entire lineup today and this was the end result.
So now for my thoughts going back to the very start. The all-purpose cleaner is a very versatile product. I find myself using it everywhere, inside and out for those deeper cleans allowing to strip the surface before later adding a layer of protection. It did a fantastic job of cleaning those luggy tyres, bringing them back all set for the later stages. The wheel wells were an easy task when I used both the APC and the larger wheel brush. It's a soft brush but still works well enough to work in the product and scrub away those extra filthy areas. The wheel cleaner wasn't faced with extremely contaminated wheels, but it still assisted in making for an easier cleaning process. It reacted turning purple when it got in contact with the iron particles, easily breaking it up to later be brushed and rinsed off, leaving behind a nice clean wheel. Clean strip in the foam cannon wasn't a necessary job but still helped in aiding for a safer wash, helping to break down the immediate mess. It wasn't overly thick but to be fair I didn't use that much as I knew I'd be using it again immediately after with the wash mitt. When using it with the wash mitt it felt slick under the mitt and when it came to rinsing it off it was also a breeze. It left the car with very little beating ability as it did have protection previously added and this is the one time where we want to be having none at all. But it was okay if there was a little bit left as the next step was sure to get rid of it and that was with the clay mitt. The clay mitt offered a more thorough cleaning stage. These new methods in claying are super easy without sacrificing quality of work. The clay mitt was a dream to use, speeding up the usual slow process and due to its shape and flexibility it was also easy to get in and around those hard to reach areas. Stated on the site it's also good for up to 40 washes and if you were to drop it unlike having to throw it away like you would with a clay bar you can simply rinse it down and continue working. The drying towel was really a step up from the rest. Though not that plush it still soaked up the excess water with ease and kept going until the whole car was completely dry. Now the bug and tar remover worked exactly how it said it would. It melted those hard stuck on bugs that were then easily rinsed off after a little more agitation but it didn't really take that much at all. Now stepping up into the paint correcting cream. The compound or first stage is the most aggressive formula of the three correcting creams. It did a fantastic job of removing that gross faded oxidized look from the paint and along with it a lot of those scratches. This was a side by side shot only after a few passes. Obviously once I went over it again the results then improved to a finish with even less defects and the scratches that did remain were either to the point of needing wet sanding or simply too deep. The polish was much the same, it made for a more refined finish still creating a very noticeable side by side result from the previous cut. The finishing polish was amazing and added that final touch to the paint almost like a glaze leaving behind a very slick surface. All of them had minimal dusting issues which was a pleasant surprise and they all lack fillers and are safe for all paint types which puts you at ease when you're working on a range of vehicles. Each one worked in perfectly with the other. Using a lighter pad you might actually be able to use the cutting compound as a finishing product it was that good. Same goes for the polish. Using a heavier cutting pad would obviously enable for a faster correcting process potentially removing the need for the first cut only if your car wasn't overly damaged or faded. Now the metal polish made for a nice difference side by side, helping to remove that oxidized tarnished metal look leaving behind a nice shiny surface. Downside was it was a little runny to what I'm used to which can be tricky when first applying it to your towel but I wouldn't really even call that an issue. It's safe to be used on brass, copper, aluminium, chrome, stainless, silver and gold so it's pretty versatile too. Into now the paint protection. Radiant was really easy to apply and buffed to an extremely slick finish, leaving the car not only looking top notch but also made it feel super smooth. Also great that it didn't take that long to cure before then applying the next layer. That simply minimizes the chances of dust having to settle between the steps, especially in places like here in Mildura. Having dust left over between steps is a big no no as we've just finished fixing up the paintwork, we don't want it turning back to how it was. It created a nice hydrophobic surface and by now we know what that brings with it. A car that's easier to dry next time around and to generally keep clean. They've also specified that Radiant can last up to 4 months. Now the hand wax, I love this wax, it's a new favourite for sure. I've used it on a few cars now and it's so easy to apply and remove. Not only that but it also creates a really nice wet look finish to the car. It is a car wax that tells us it's tough but it'll be interesting how it holds up in this hotter climate. 
The tire and trim care helped bring life back into the rubber and plastics all over. It didn't really leave a tacky gloss shine, but a nice natural finish. I find myself using it a lot with my own car, especially around the roof area with all of its moving parts and seals. So important to look after all of them, and with the Hilux, having the UV protection and anti-static ability is a real added bonus, as this car is commonly found outside or four-wheel driving across the countryside. I've already given my thoughts in a previous video about the glass cleaner, but for the purpose of this video, I'll do it again. This ammonia-free glass cleaner works perfectly to help clean that glass, leaving it streak-free, and it's good knowing that it's safe for all glass types and tinted windows, as I find myself dealing with a lot of that with the cars that come in to be detailed. Last but not least of the product list was the tyre shine. Yes, I could have used the tyre and trim care, but since the product was specifically made for this purpose, I thought it'd be rude to not add it in. Larger tyres can be daunting, as you'll likely end up using a lot of your product, but with this spray, it went a long way when used with the foam block. I found that the foam block held in a lot of the liquid, so when you moved on to the next tyre, there was more in it to keep you going. It added some serious clean gloss look, and after a bit of driving around, there was no sling to be found from the tyre. It'll help prevent fading on the tyres, and keep them looking fresh for weeks, if not months. I found all the products that were in this video fantastic to use along with the buckets, brush and towels. Getting lids on your buckets couldn't be more highly recommended, trust me. And the wheels were a nice touch too. The towels for removing the excess residue after correcting and protecting were unbelievably soft. Even after they were washed several times, they kept their plush feel. They all worked as they said they would. In terms of how long they last, I'm not too sure on that completely with the sealants and waxes, as it can vary depending on how the vehicle is kept. This Hilux was soon to be four-wheel driving and getting muddy. Was I disheartened that my hard work was getting messed up? Not at all. It's great seeing a car used for its intended purposes, and I know that from my hard work, maintaining the car will be a whole lot easier thanks to the great products I use. Just remember here, as stated in the previous video, Jay Leno wouldn't have his name on products if he didn't believe in how well they worked. He's well known for his passion of cars, and this car care is proof of that. In terms of the review, that's it. If you're after more info, I'll be adding a link to the Jay Leno's Garage site where you can find all of these products and prices. Thank you for watching, and also a massive thank you to the team at Leno's Garage Australia for sending these fantastic products through to me so I can test them out. So that's it. Don't forget to check out some of my other uploads, and I'll catch you all later. What happens when you try to review 10 products within the one video? One, that's two. What happens when you try to review 10 products into the one video with someone that likes to keep things short and simple? You get this. What happens when you get 10 products to review? How come when I press that record button, I immediately forget everything that I needed to say? What happens when you try to fit 10 products into the one review of the video? Today's video is dedicated to reviewing the majority of Jay Leno's exterior detailing car product range stuff. Damn it. Today's video is dedicated to reviewing the majority of Jay Leno's garage exterior. It's exterior. Start again. It's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> You can stop any time you want with the recording. <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> oh! My freaking hand.